Hello everyone and welcome to the Immortal Break the Game Weekly Alpha Edition number 22. I'm your host Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, joined by ZK. How's it going ZK? Pretty good, pretty good. Excited for a 1v1 tournament. Feels like it's been a while since we had those and yeah, looking forward to some. It has been a while since we've had those. Last two tournaments were 2v2, the Alpha Trials last week and Break, well, okay, Break the Game 21 didn't end up happening, but the, yeah. the last two planned tournaments were 2v2, so we haven't had the 1v1 in about three weeks. Yeah, now it's going to be exciting so you're to see. not wrong. It's going to be exciting to see what they come up with, right? We saw a last 2v2 tournament. There was a bit of a the call rush that happened, and let's see how that's effective in 1v1. Is You know, the the, the Aru meta has changed a bit with the call, with the call change, so I'm curious to see yeah, how it brings it up them. front. Yeah, yeah I, exactly. I expect... I do expect we're going to see that. We have... It came up before. It's not the newest strategy. Months and months ago, we had mm -hmm. the call as a major yeah. thing. So if, any, if either player go, if either totally not or, or Skix, the two players we have on first, go for Aru, that will be a thing. Yeah, no, going for that instead of, uh, well, whatever else they want to go for. There's so many options right now, there's not, uh, like for a little bit, we had a lot of an i meta where everyone went for i because just dealt with all the air ground units so mm -hmm. well, but now the calls mm -hmm. have been buffed, you can go back to the calls. i are still not a bad option because it's always good to go in and harass as much as you can. So a lot of options open for that Aru side. And I, well, we'll see who they pick because, true. of course, they have to actually pick an Aru Immortal to play them. They'll, but eventually. They'll play that eventually. Is like, <laughs> that's true. That's true. Sooner or later, we will get someone playing Malarzol, if nothing else. But hmm? for these players, they haven't really seen, we haven't actually seen Skix yet on stream. So that's no? going to be new. But Nautavoyer has only played Zol on stream. That was mm. months ago, but... Yeah, Voyer yeah, took maybe. a bit of a break, but he's a bit one of our lore masters, one of the people that knows the lore the best out of anyone, so... Um, oh, yeah, they are... Yeah. They have been very attentive with the lore town halls, making sure that everything gets marked down. Thank God, yeah, because I, I can't attend those generally, and just like, oh, yes, it's all written down, at least I can wa I can read it afterwards, because, oh, I can't attend. It's just nice to be able to go through the lore afterwards. So, yeah, I, I, I do like Voyer quite a bit just for that. And we'll see how mm -hmm. he uh, stands up in the in the competitive format of this game, break the game. It's been a while since they've been in one of these tournaments. Like, yep. They haven't been in a tournament since Break the Game Alpha 7, Ooh. which was about five months or four or five months ago. Yeah. So and, it's well, been a while. Yeah, he just hasn't been playing quite as much. Usually we can see who plays by looking through the look for game in our Discord channel, in the Mortal Discord channel. And he just hasn't been playing all that much. He's been busy with school, so lore is about all he could handle. Thank you. And thank you. thank him for that, for all the lore he's been able to give us. But at the same time, you know, playing a competitive game, it's uh, not always easy to find the time for it. Yeah, very much a different different ball of game. Oh, yeah. Mostly the severed heads of your enemies, but, you know, balls are balls. Mm, yeah, the, the balls, you got to juggle them, find the right, find the right time to uh, throw the right one at the right person. And, mm. yeah, yeah, fireballs. Exactly, fireballs the yeah. Future. Yeah. Bring up the fireballs. Don't don't throw ice balls because that's basically a snowball. Which you know, it's, I mean, it's kind maybe of well, right you now. can do that. That is an option. Mm. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with throwing snowballs unless there's ice in it. Then it's kind of cruel. That, I mean, it's a war. It's it, yeah, okay, fine. Mm. Snowball fireballs are all a bit. Dangerous. I feel like you, you just got it. I feel like really at that point, all you have you have to make sure that you're only doing snow fights on the first day it snowed. Yeah. Ice That's just the... hasn't had time to form yet. Or at least if it's only if it's stayed below zero since it started snowing, you're fine. That's what you hope for. That's what you hope for. And so That's the you idea. Get, you just get that <laughs> wacky little block of ice in there and then you're like, oh man, I shouldn't have hit you so hard. I shouldn't have made you bleed. But then we're all about a game that makes people bleed a lot and treat people that just love blood, but that's not what Skix is doing. He's playing Orzum? I'm not sure. Actually, they're both playing Ajari. They're both playing Ajari. For okay. some reason, I can't show you that. Oh, well. Ooh, that's Sorry, guys. Wild. I'd like to show you that, but apparently I'm not allowed to do so. In fact, I'm also... Huh. Ah. Well, this is okay. interesting. So this is going to be a game in Shadows of Mystery. We do not know what this applies. We'll just have to I... buy it by all... It feels like Brood War all over again. We're back in 1998, where you have to cast without uh, all that information. But that's okay. We'll do our best, and we'll see what the, how the game unfolds. <laughs> Why can't I get the 
full. Yeah, it's sorry. Uh, yeah, it's th it's definitely going to be a shot of mystery because everything's just decided to. Oh, there we go. Oh, We're okay. Oh, We're okay. Everything's fine. Yeah, everything's perfect. We have a mini map. I still don't see the bracket, the the supply, and all that, but that's okay for me. I'll just have a shroud of mystery. Uh, Legion Hot, well, both of them going for an expand first. Both of them going for a pretty. Well, you know, it's Ajari versus Jari. There's not really a way to kill your opponent that early. Supari are good, but not kill your base good, at least in the very, very early stage of the game. So they both feel pretty confident taking that expansion and just heading out out. I'm. Double checking. They haven't gone for anything. No, they haven't gone for anything. No, no. They just it's, expanded. Not of is being much less interested, looking much less interested in knowing what their opponent's up to. Apparently confident that they can simply intuit it based on what they see coming out of the base, but not actually going inside to check on what's up. And to be fair, that's not surprising. We've seen so many, like this approach here, building up what Skix is doing, getting the early Soul Foundry inside the Resolver or Dervish, that's very common to the point that, yeah, total amount of your figures, not much point going inside. Yeah. I mean, as soon as you see the expansion, you're like, okay, I saw the expansion. I know the timings for stuff isn't going to come out. He, I also expand, so my units are going to come out at the same time as yours do. So there's not really a reason to worry about anything as they both now start heading for the pirate camps. Um, yeah, no, Voyer. Well, Skix will see Voyer going for the pirate camp here. and He could try and steal it, but no, T-Bot's getting shattered by a spear. Always a bad way to go. Well, the... It's being smart, not getting two in there. Not if Ayora is oh. able to stop a little bit of scouting. Are they going to be able to take the pyre? Skix does have the surround on them. And Skix bullying them off that pyre. But not if Ayora does grab it at the cost of two Saparis. And not if Ayora playing a bit of a bit of a risky game there. That's an expensive loss there, losing two of his uh, Sapari. A, in the early game, it's a, it's a pretty massive difference. Of course, it won't end the game, but that's a re really nice start for Voya, uh, for Skix off the get-go. Not, hmm? so not to mention... Not mention as, as Skix is getting the Dervish basically just counter, straight-up countered non totally non their army, and totally non is committed to Sapari. This is an amazing move by Skix. It, not of is going to be quite vulnerable to this for the next few minutes. Yeah, until his absolvers come out, then absolvers will kind of defend everything. But he Skix is sending his dervish around the map, making making them undetected as he heads in and probably most likely wants to head for some worker kills. Instead, heads for a pyro camp first. Needs to get that pyro up and running. As oh, he hasn't he hasn't denied any from Voyer yet. So it's all about the game of getting as much as you can as fast as possible. And so far, so good for Skix. Definitely a position where they could at least do an assault relatively safely. Like it's always a jar. If because they're playing a jar, Skix does have the option to just shield up their units. Yeah, and I don't know if they're heading for the kill quite yet. Just content, uh, staying on two bases and pecking up to what they tend to go for. Skix, as you said, the Dervish to start with. Absolvers on Voyer's side, so Absolvers great for holding ground. They they can be aggressive if they want. Uh, but sometimes not as great. Dervish are more about the Harassi getting in and out, killing some workers and coming back. Which is a little unfortunate, as Skix has done none of those things. Preferring to, instead of have some of the Dervish just exist, can vibe in there. Hey, the vibing yeah. is pretty cool. That's one of those things you do. And ooh, getting on those Absolvers. Oh. And, and the Zephyrs are coming in. One Dervish goes down. The other one barely stays alive and gets out of there with its head still on its shoulders. And that's where you want your head to be. Uh, yeah, well, not of here definitely has their head on their shoulders as they are they are up on the tech. They know exactly what Skix is up to, or at least knew enough to figure to go to the counter. And now Skix basically doesn't have any value for these Dervish right now. This is this is a waste for them. And it's really well, unfortunate they're starting out like they started out a little bit reasonably strong and weren't able to capitalize on having had the counter to their opponent for a minute or two. Oh, as you say that, the Dervish don't find an opening. Oh, they're gonna try. No they're gonna try. Heading for the workers here. There's four of them. Voyer needs to run away as there's nothing defending them. At least one goes down. Second one. Uh, well, they're attacking. They're counterattacking. But moats are not great against Dervish. Baby angels are not great against teen angels. The teen axe is powerful and coming at them strong. Absolvers coming in to defend. Uh, but it's too little, too late. As three yeah. of them died, and all Dervish finally fall. Voyer but able to come in to defend and do. 
that after losing not very much econ economically speaking voyeur oh voyeur it's a came ahead of that engagement skix is going to be struggling now to get safety for the expansion they're definitely working on making sure they have their third expansion up yeah. not a voyeur on the other hand has a surrid map control over the entire south side of the map and they're gonna have no problems out of their economy over the mid game Let's see, the advantage of setting observation is you did force Voyer to head back home and deal with it, which meant that he has the opportunity to get that tower up. Tower is up and running. Uh, the base is help, helping defend. Of course, this tower won't live long as, well, everything's attacking and there's nothing in position, but that's okay. Gave Skakes the time to get in position, and the assault will not continue much more, much further than that. As the tower goes down, it's not the end of the world. It's a bit expensive on Pyre, but... Skix is fine with that. He kept his base alive. Yeah, like you said, Zed Kid, it lets it, Skix know what was going on. Exactly. So they could defend if if need be. Yeah, that's a, that's a power of strategy games, right? It's not all about it's not all about having the biggest army. It's about having the right army at the right place and knowing where your opponent is going and countering it at the right time. Which is exactly what Skix needs to do right now. Their army tech wise is in an awkward position it's not it's not like it can't deal with what Twin Lever has it just has to be really careful how it attempts to do so okay Skakes slowly retaking the bases I like the expansion pattern from Skakes he's taking map control in the center making sure his units go there uh but the tower will not have oh. the chance to go up but the battle comes on strong the not ever comes in the forces cancel forces out Forces out the shield as well, but Skix getting multiple kills without losing anything. Not if we retreats to their tower, gets away from the fight, and Skix will still be able to maintain their third. That's what matters here. Taking that third in the center position, making a stronghold for the next pushes, making sure his units are in position. Where on the other side, taking the corner base instead makes it, you know, it, it's a different expansion pattern going for the sides. Uh, not as easy to defend uh, necessarily as your opponent might not be in position. And this triangle base makes it easier to just run back and forth between different positions. Certainly with those wardens that Skix has set up, that defense will be a fair bit easier. That being said, none of your... Not of, what is none of your looking for here right now? Because they are not... They're teching up hard. Oh, getting charged. They're, they're looking to... Yeah, they are totally not of our... Looking to just out tech Skix. Skix wants to get rid of this army, push it back before it becomes a major threat. Skix's approach has largely been quantity, while totally not by York going for quality instead. Hey, quantity is a quality of its own, um, but might not be enough, as he said, as all of those powerful units. Once the Shadow come on board, Shadows are just great against all those ground units, especially those Sipari. Salshin can do, can, can hold well enough with their shields and just jumping on their opponents, but the Star was just great retreating from. And oh. Skix. Yeah, Skix will have to deal with that soon enough. Putting Tunnel and Ivor in an awkward position. But not of your they have their absolvers upgraded. They do have they do have the high ground, as it were. So Skix can't really push this. All they can do is create a no man's land that Total and Avoyor has to grind their units through. And yeah, this is a very dangerous to, to let Voyer have this position. It's such a forward position with a tower to help defend. Skix will need to take care of this position as soon as he can if he doesn't want it to be you know, just a very hard position to hold. Especially now that uh, Skix is getting a bit out, out of position. The Sentinels are here to help defend against any air that could pop up. But there's not too much air, only the Wardens uh, heading for some harass or getting that that camp, but they can't collect the power after. Oh yeah, it's a power, it's a power miner. He'll be fine. What am I talking about? Well, oh, that's, up to, that's up to totally not a voyeur. <laughs> Skix going for maybe getting some harassment. In the, oh, this is too little too late for Skix and the harassment. This this game is going to come down to whether Skix can make their mass Spari army get value on, against what totally not a voyeur has been deploying. And totally not a voyeur, they haven't got a lot of air to ground. So at the very least, Skix won't have to worry about taking out anything flying too, too much. However, Skix's Warden investment is not going to pay off with Total and Adavoyer having just gone full on Sentinels here. Yeah, well, the, well, the type of army that Skix has, it's all about the engagement. He has to get a full surround. He needs to get a wraparound on all these units. As long as Total and Adavoyer has those 
has the hills, has high ground. It's going to be really hard for him to engage. And Skik sees it, Oof. pulls back in time. Yeah, speaking of, that get, trying to get around that bridge is not going to be easy. Skix goes for the Ancient despite it being way a ways down. But that Ostrike comes through, softens them up a little bit. Ancient does end up being lost. Totally not of your... No reason to continue the fight. They got their 100 pyre. They can move back. He's doing his best to continue forward for... Sees the warden, gets one of them. The other one can get a bit of harassing, can get a few kills at the very least. Oh yeah, takes three shots now. Oh, four shots. Well, oh. that's not worth it. Two, wor two motes for the cost of a warden is a loss for Skix. Yeah, he can't really have well he can afford it right now. He's on the eh, I, I bet to differ. Totally not of a you're getting their fourth base up. Skix is still on three bases. They're still on equal this... economy for now, but Voyer will have the economy coming for him. It all comes down to this fight as Skix comes back to his defense of the tower, keeping in the right position, needs to get right around against these Somi absolvers. And oh, we are trying to get careless. Moving in. You got shields from Skix. Taking a few of the establishment here and there. They have shot their shot, however. But the surround, like you're talking about, Zakei, is coming in. Skix able to get that surround on Tolanada Voyor. The Ark Mothers from Tolanada Voyor's Ark Mothers working overtime to keep their army alive, but it's not working. Salvation is dropped to keep Tolanada Voyor's army from falling. But it's only going to work so well. It's been softened up. Skix going in for the kill. But those Absolvers Tolanad Voyor has set up are enough to hold the line. Tolanad Voyor maintaining their army presence. Exactly. He lost a few key units, but Salvation was able to get them back. So great use Salvation there, which resurrects their dead units for about 20 seconds. Um, not a full HP, but still keeping him in the fight right there really helped uh, win that battle. Uh, behind this kicks, he gets map control, can get at least one tower out of this. He, he might go for more uh, harass. Ooh, but the warrior doesn't so want to let the tricky. Totally not a coming around the back. They, they're they out of position to take back this part, part of the map. Skix, they can hold. They're threatening Totally not a production and economic center. Totally not a forced to get back in this. But again, Skix having the surround going in. Not a voyeur, spending the pyre to get this fight in their favor. But the position was set up by Skix. Not a voyeur forced to retreat. Trying to find a favorable position around their production. The Dissolvers are way out of the battle lines. Getting picked off one by one. The Ostrike Sharu from Nadavoyer. Slowing down Skix's army. It's just not been quite enough. Skix will need some reinforcements. Nadavoyer slowly but surely losing their army. Skix keeping theirs alive. Getting the, Has the surround in. Has the Zephyr still going. Doing the bulk of the work to get rid of Nana Voyeur's back line. And, well, Voyeur survives this and fries from it, Oof. keeping all of his Absolvers alive. The, uh, the Ostrex in the middle of the fight were so powerful in Skix, didn't back down from them. And because of that, lost his whole entire army, while Voyeur keeps the most expensive units alive. Look at how many Charles he has. Those Charles are expensive, and being able to keep them all alive, that's really the power of those Sentinels that are keeping all that anti-air anti away from them. And with an extra base on him, Voyer has a commanding lead on this game. After Kate taking care of Skix's army, it's an uphill battle for Skix. They rebuilt enough Zephyrs, but they've got they've got a lot more work to do to get their army back online. Thrones are up on the way for Skix. They're at least thinking about ways of getting rid of the Sharu, but again, like you said, the Sentinels are just not going to let that happen. It's totally not Voyer is prepared for any air-based anti-air. The only options Skix really has are Castigators, which they have not gone for. And yeah, they might be, they might be pretty neat at this point. Sharu are gonna try to do their best. Zephyrs are decent anti-air, but there's but uh, Sipari on the ground coming in at them, and the Zephyrs don't want to fight those straight up. The Spears can just penetrate the armor so well. The crossbows do not do well against something that's right next to them. As the front comes in to help the fight, it might be too little, too late as the Ashrays go down. The Zephyrs Oh, no, Zephyrs need to move! Zephyrs need to move! No, if they'd move them and find Skix, you gotta get your micro going here. So sorry, but totally not a voyeur. They've got your base. They got your base's number. This third cannot hold. Final Heaven's Aegis comes down to try and survive as much as he can. Voyeur 
politely pulls back. Doesn't really need to. He can uh, he can be a bit more assertive this time around. He can head in there and uh, just bull rush his way through. As he does, the Sharo don't even need to shoot their off strike. There's enough here to kill absolutely everything in those Sipari. Rush forward. Another Arc Mother comes down with their spell to give a bit more armor. But it does not matter at this point. The quantity is in his favor. So is the quality. The Thrones coming in. Powerful units, but not quite enough as the army of Sentinels come in to, per to chase them away. And the third base is heading down. Skix, if they had managed to get around the Awestrike, there would have been an opportunity in the last fight. There would have been an opportunity to take out the Sentinels. Those Zephyrs were basically there to work with the work against the Sentinels. They'd go. The Sentinels would go after Skix's Thrones, and then Skix's Zephyrs would take out the would take out Voyeur Sentinels. That was clearly the plan. But you gotta dodge the Awestrike. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> Voyeur is gonna wipe you. Yeah, the Awestrikes. We haven't actually seen that many Sharu lately. People have been going for a lot of thrones. We're really seeing the potential in the Sharu, especially the Ostrek in this game as Voyeur really shows how powerful they are. He's looking for the, the corner base, but there's nothing there. No, they Skix know. They know it's it's two bases. And Skix is on his final bases. Voyeur comes in for what may be the last fight. Sentinel sniping down Skix's thrones. Skix unable to hold their army, and the natural expansion goes down. Not a Voyeur. Takes the game. Skix throws in the towel for game one. Yeah, but nah, that was the game. Uh, Skix really had yeah. some good engagements, had good fights. But in the end, Voyager just had the more uh, expensive army, the more valuable army. Was able to take those fights and get the win at the end of it all. It really came down to Skix losing... It was kind of a couple things. Skix didn't have much tech to work with, which was okay for a short time, but they weren't able to take advantage of the timings where it was useful. Well, see, he, he really had the quantity part really pat down for a few moments, and he was able to get the full surround and keep his opponent out of the way, but it was just headbutting his way through the natural, which had a lot... Yeah. Well, it, went, it had too many choke points, right? And choke points it are did. great for absolvers, and really bad for... For melee units like the Sapari. So he needed instead to go for counterattacks on the other expansions and just keep his map control to force his opponent to stay back while he takes control of the map, expands, kills his opponent's out, outer expansions. That's how he could could have really uh, taken advantage of that position. But we'll see how he does it in the next game. If he's sticking with Ajar, if he tries something else. So it's interesting to see what players like to play for. As you said, Voyer last time only played Zol. This time he's been a, an Ajari, Ajari lover and see if he sticks with it or changes it out. I'm actually curious to see what Skix is up to. They they were struggling a bit that game to get the tech, and I'm kind of wondering how much experience they have with Ajari. Like, oh, they've only been, been playing a lot of Absolver Sapari games. Yeah, not too much Absolver <laughs> here, although the Absolvers were pretty big game changers for Voyager keeping... Well, they absolutely were. Like I, said, like I said, the reinforcements on the natural attack won yeah. that fight. Yeah, there were a few things that plus the off strikes just burning fire on top of everything. Well, we are getting our immortal picks for this game. It's gonna be a Jari for Skix. And not a Voyeur going back to Zol. Oh, there we go. So a bit of biodiversity here. See if we see some calls like we're talking at the start of the broadcast. Or if we'll be heading for, you know, anything else. More right. I-Cores, especially against Ajari. It uh Sakals have really done the done the a bulk of the work in their versus versus Aru. Uh, versus Ajari, it's not they're still great, but maybe not quite as much with the cost of gas. You might want to spend that gas somewhere else. Well that's up to that is gonna be up to Skix. Oh sorry, my bad. Not a weird one for Mala. Oh. Aru is Aru. We may still we may yet still see the call rushes. Exactly. Uh going for the Ether. And the uh, Altar of the Warby really early. It's not expanding. Might, as you said, it might just be an expand. A very aggressive build from the get-go. Second E for as well. Okay. That's an aggressive build for sure. See, that is something interesting about Immortal, where you have the Defender's Advantage. You have the Tower that's pretty good at defending. Uh, but neither of them expanded, so who comes out ahead? Generally, when it's aggression versus aggression, whoever has more tech will, will have a small advantage just because... Well, you don't really expand, so the tech really comes in handy against army and army versus army fights. We'll see if that's necessarily the case. That's uh, going to be advantage voyeur. So keep an eye on voyeur's unit selection because if they get 
they make use of that ether, we could see we couldn't see them very quickly taking the early game. Yeah. Well, heading for Mass Hunters, not the Zakal rush we were we're talking about. Mass Hunters quite good. Well, decent generals that can deal with pretty much everything. We'll get at least one teapot to shatter as uh, Skik's scouting goes down and nothing else. No more map vision as he sees his opponent has Mass Hunters, which is still good to know. So, I guess not. Oh, wow. Quick Amber Room. Is not if we are going for Icor still? Yeah, well, Icors are still very decent, especially against Sapari's, That's, you know? The light yeah, units. fair enough. Skix has shown that they want to go mass Sapari, and Voyeur knows it. Hmm? Go for the counter, makes sense. I've already, yeah, as you said, he had a lot of Aether, so what is that Aether used for at that point? What will he want to head for after getting that Amber Room? The Icors do not cost any Aether at all. They're able to get quite a few of them. From, they from don't, the but their upgrades do. Yeah. If they... Well, I say that, but... Yeah, there's no upgrade so far. No, no, no. no. Okay. Well, oh, okay. Not, there's no. We site. spoke too soon. Regardless, the yeah, not not over here. Will be needing ether. This is no. One this base. is a one base psycho rush strategy. This is pretty typical. Yeah, like this was pretty typical. A little bit, but not as popular, but still typical. And Skix is playing right into this. Like Voyeur's, Voyeur's gonna have no problem wiping Skix's army out unless Skix starts setting up higher tech gets. Absolvers get Zephyrs with Mass Sapari, not a Voyeur, is perfectly prepared. Yeah, well, we say that, but it still comes down a lot to Micro. As uh, Rain versus Melee units, the Melee units, as soon as they get on top of anything, will wipe the floor of them. Of course, Voyeur has decent Micro and just has to pull back well enough to keep his opponent uh, on his toes and keep him away from him as he just wants to pick him off and run. And here comes the battle about to start as they're both heading towards each other as Kix is... Right nearby Voyeur. There you go. The pullback micro is good on the Icors and Mass Hunters. Not quite pulling back fast enough. Support able to jump on top of everything. The Mass Hunters go down. Icors are still here. And some decent Icor micro for Voyeur. Needs to get a few of them. Skix. Well, Skix was able to get this round. Got the positioning. Made it work out. Not, and none of Voyeur does not have speed upgrade on their Icors yet. So they can only do so much on their actual harassment front. That being said, Icor... To call, which not where is going into, is absolutely going to deal with the Sapari. Skix does not feel confident in pure Sapari, though. Skix has teched up themselves. It's not going to be too one sided. They're clearly realizing, okay, Icor, Icor will wreck me. I need to change my build. Yeah, you can get some Sapari speed to get on top of those uh, Icors until they get speed of their own. Then it's going to be the same bad. Oh, gets a nice shot there. Said Voyer has to be very careful to keep those alive. And yeah, the dance continues, but Voyer had enough of that dance, heading back home for now, getting behind the defenses of his beautiful, uh, beautiful Zakal, who can really take the hits. They don't mind that getting is hit what they're there for. Yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot yeah, of big, armor on those guys. <laughs> big bully dogs to take the hits, and tiny acid dogs to dish them out. Yeah, get, get them burning, get, uh, get them burning behind their armor, and there's nothing they can do. So I'm curious what Skix's response is going to be. So far, they haven't actually shown their hand. A couple of Absolvers is not unusual. The call, uh, however, are ready to deal with that. Yeah, the Teapot sees everything, sees that type of army his opponent has, and maybe he wants to jump on top of those Absolvers before anything happens. Needs to be careful as Zakal is still taking the brunt of that damage, but the full surrounds the part would take care of them in easy matter. They have the choke point here, and Absolvers mm -hmm. are not in range. Of where it keeps his opponent at bay. Both of them just setting up their natural and hanging on for the next step in their game plan. Skix a little bit ahead on that front too. They've gotten their natural upgraded. They've gotten everything pretty well sorted for them, but not a voyeur is I mean they they expanded later. They are relying much more on wearing their arm their opponent's army down and threatening expansions than they are on getting their own expansions themselves. Not of I don't know that Not of has actually made that value trade yet. Yeah, neither of them have really gone at the big lead so far, both of them. Pretty equal, both on, you know, a decent army that can handle the other one based on position and micro. I need to be careful not to jump into those Absolvers. Nice position. Really got to be careful not to take that extra damage. Yeah, I mean, as long as you don't 
get in too hard, you'll you'll stay alive. You don't get you don't get dinner plates thrown at you. Yeah, don't get dinner plates thrown at you. No, no, no never it's not pleasant. That. They shatter, and then little shards of ceramic everywhere. Yeah, don't, don't deal with that. And also, it's a waste of food. Well, I guess you don't have to have food on a plate. I was assuming anymore. that they were empty at the time. But you're right. Yeah. It could be a waste of food, too. Yeah. Why would you ever want dinner plates to be empty? Unless, like, they stay on your on your counter for a few weeks. And I guess the i is coming you, in for their you, own meal, though. <laughs> they are going to fill those plates up. Skik's entirely out of position to stop this harassment. Towers are helping, but these are too many i for those small towers to deal with. Now, that's an economy line just dealt with. Oh, oh not over here. you got to be careful. you got to be careful. I get you're going for the moats, but you it's... Those uh, I-Core do not live that long. They do not work under pressure that well. Actually, I, does I'm, not even sure. army, though. I'm not even sure that uh, Voyer got a single kill. But as you said, he forced back the army, which leaves Voyer ready to go take down the tower. You know, that was always a position he wanted to take down. And with Skix now completely out of position from that I-Core harass, can get the tower, gets position on the map. That's also important in this game, getting the position, stopping your opponent from taking those... Uh, High ground positions where, and then you can attack a bit more in the shadows. None of all your shifting pretty heavily to a kittle based army, like well, tier two, tier three army, getting getting some incubators. Definitely going to be we're we're going to be seeing we're going to be seeing that end game stuff. Oh, bloodbound too. Okay, get rid of the absolvers that way. Totally not here. Using the attack to cover their tech skicks in response is not is getting something but they're still a little bit behind yep finally heading for the angel Aram. um generally seeing this matchup angel Aram going up a bit faster uh, just to help get those sentinels faster to deal with those fronts there's been no air units so far at all both content on the fighting the ground battles and taking a third about the same time none of you are not sure if they're aware that Skix is going for this. Skix will find out soon enough as the, the Dervish are coming around. Yeah, ready to switch their way through an alloy line. Hopefully that a bit better in his opponent's eye course. Actually, with this army composition, not of yours kind of... They're kind of in trouble. Like, the, the calls are going to help, but Skix's army... Yeah, it's hard to deal it's, with. The Icors would have helped a lot in this. The acid of uh, the acid really deals with those lightnings. Yeah, so flanking well. flanking with them would have been that that would have given Turnlan of an option here. But now they don't have it. And that's got to deal with, and they got to deal with harassment at home. Skix providing the distraction. Uh, but Voyer not sending back home his whole army. I like that from him. Uh, he can mm -hmm. he can just wait for Omnivores to come back and surrounds one of Dervish. The teen angel <laughs> heads down and dies. Uh, the second one also gets around, tries to get a few more kills before it goes. Gets at least a few of them. <laughs> Solid base defense. That's the thing. You can't you can't count the workers out themselves out. You got to micro that out away from them so you don't get surrounded. That is how the game works. Yeah. Oh, ancient will be, will be coming in soon. Can make a big difference. Both of them have a good amount of power. The same amount exactly. Actually. In a matter. So not if we are coming in here. They are going to be relying entirely on. Ooh, even on this. spell casting, like they are relying entirely on the on the dread sisters to cover, and with siege mods they will yeah, use that as a way to get rid of the absolvers, force force stuff forward that can then be baited out. This is entirely totally not if we were like if they can bait Skix's army out, all, every every unit they kill is a win. Yeah, those siege mods are doing the are, are are doing arrows work right now, taking care of all these units. As the part again top of the blood bounce, they're moving forward, but without the support of the absolvers, they're just not quite that powerful, especially with that wall creating a bit of a choke. You are stuck behind that wall. Warden doing a really good job taking out one of those siege moths. And, and they're Warden confident none of, none of Sapari. Yep, the Sapari have been whittled down. Skix. Skix not having it. Doesn't matter. Totally not aware. Still got ahead. Quite a ways ahead on army. Yeah, it doesn't. And Skix. Going for the counterattack does not have much to work with. The shields will be running out soon enough, and as long as not if we can maintain this position of the blood will, they're fine. Yeah. <gasps> Losing an incubator. Ooh, that was that was not a trivial loss. S yeah, no, he's getting a bit too far forward. Skix able to get some damage from the resolvers are set up. Even with Red Harvest, it's a lot. Skix able to get the surround in there, and don't let Avira taking too many losses. 
has to fall back. Has to make sure they're not too close to the absolvers. Yeah, it's 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 really the tale of this fight, right? You gotta be careful of those absolvers. Absolvers always doing their doing so much damage from the back line. You want to be able to jump them, but with all those Sipari in front, you can't jump them at all. And keeping that tower alive will be what they need to do right now. Again, the Dread Sisters working for not only working overtime to keep the Sipari at bay and not doing a bad job of it either. But having lost the tower, there's not much to defend to with. Yeah, Skex really has a decent army at this point, even if it's mostly Sapari, the few Wardens coming in. Uh, Vora can still take this fight, comes down to Micro, he needs good pullback Micro, and stay away from those Absolvers. Those Absolvers are the death of you. If you have, Every time you get too close to them, they'll shoot you to death. But and they've leapfrogged least... close enough, too. Like, that Blood Well is no longer going to be useful. It's in range of the Absolvers. Not for your pushing back. Got the right harvest. They don't care if units die. Will to break the absolver position? Skate's going to this round. Not a foyer has the firepower to out to outdo them. The last absolver falls. Oh, Skate's continuing. The, the power of the red harvest and full control there. We saw so many Kiddo come forward with the incubators. It's all about the Kiddo coming out with the with. Uh, all the spells coming out to spawn those Skittles. And with that, Skix is forced back to his third base and has to defend there. And he needs to defend his third base or his opponent will have a very powerful lead. And he knows it. He won't be able to defend this. It is GG as Voyeur moves on to the next round. Well done, not a Voyeur. Solid use attack there. And Skix, I mean, for the first tournament showing, it's a good start. Please come back yeah. next time because you always learn, always improve. Yeah. No, it's always fun. He is still has some life left. He's heading to the to the lower bracket. Will he be fighting against YJ Zoo? I believe. And from there, it'll uh, it'll be an uphill battle. Of Zoo, a powerful player as well. Uh, he'll have his uh. It, it won't be an easy matchup, but you know he could make it through. He had some nice strategies. We'll see how Zoo handles it on his side. However, we'll be moving on to the next side of to our side of the bracket, where it'll be Magical <laughs> versus versus uh, Voyeur. Is that Doesn't it? Over. It is indeed. Oof. Okay, so this will be an interesting fight. A voyeur versus a magical. Magical, uh, the first team of the tournament for a reason. He's won quite a few tournaments. And voyeur has his work cut out for him. He'll do his best. Uh, let's hope, let's see how much his best is worth against our number one seed. Yeah, of where still slightly getting back in this game. We see he hasn't forgotten everything about it. He's still powerful. He's still able to take out his opponent in the, those first games. And uh, yeah, we'll see what's up with that as Magico hasn't played yet, but he's ready to rumble. He has, he always, Magico's always very good at having some powerful timings. And that's been his play style. Just find where your opponent's weak and just kill him at that point. And uh, we'll see how his innovative builds have, Bring him forward. Nah. That's going to be difficult for Nanavir to deal with. Nanavir has... They got a lot of advantage from the tech working out for them. Like the tech advantage against Skix. But now, it's going to be even for them. Yeah. Especially against someone like uh, like Magical who knows when to tech up. Who's very comfortable teching up to those higher tier units. We didn't see many Behemoths or... We saw a lot of Shara actually. But yeah, he's very comfortable teching up to those units. And we'll see if uh, if if he heads there quickly enough, or he's going for mid mid game timings. So many options for these players. And yeah, I'm looking forward to see what they come up with on uh, this next battle, which again will take care of either Frontiers or or Canyon. Magical, as we've seen in the past, is more of an Aru player, uh, but he can play anyone. He can play anything. But he's always been very very strong with Aru. A lot of Zol, uh, less Mala lately, but he's he's been playing that too. I think Mala seems to have gained some popularity back. Oh yeah, Red, really... Harvest, Red Harvest is a lot of fun, right? It's it is. It, I, I, it's the same personal experience. It really absolutely is. Yeah, getting those, those free units, the kiddos out, in exchange for that power, always powerful to bring them up and dish out that damage. We'll see if he's able to. If he'll go for Mala, Zol still has that very potent uh, hunting ground, which allows him to. Get that powerful melee, that powerful double damage for a little bit. The only one, the only remnant of the old infuse, which we're allowed to take a big fight win in the right position. 
course, hunting grounds. It needs to be mm -hmm. in the correct position to really take advantage of it. He'll be able to do something about it. Or at least we hope so. That's the idea. Oh, man. And yeah. Magico, um, hmm. Magico deciding to go on Frontiers first. Frontiers, the first map we saw, we just came off of Canyon. Canyon had a pretty fun map. There's the path in the middle. Frontiers, I guess it's also not that straightforward. There's a few different attack paths, four, four camps to pick from. Bases a bit, a bit out there. Yeah, a couple more. Oof. Man, it'd be an interesting, an interesting battle yeah. as we go forward. Either side of the bracket, we see Santa has taken out his opponent. Well, has taken out the first map yes. against Zoo, of course. So he's waiting for the winner of this match between Magico and Voyeur. Uh, Magico, of course, the first seed for a reason, mm. has a very, very good chance of going forward. With Zoo versus Skix in the losers round one. This is of course just a best of round, uh, best of one. So it's an, it's really hard to say who will win that one. It'll be a close fight either way. Uh, uh that's kind of up to Skix in this one, or is that up to not a warrior in this one? Yeah, yeah, not a warrior has to figure out a way. Uh, even if either of these players play lose, they'll go to losers round two in the lower bracket. Yeah, up against the winner of Wajazo Zone Skix. Yeah, so we could have a rematch between Voyeur and Skix, depending on how this match, go, uh, how all these matches go. Uh, but yeah, Zoo will be the favorite for that match against Skix. But Skix, a good first showing for him, uh, showing yeah. some good games, showing some decent instincts of uh, other strategy games, getting in there and trying to dish out the damage. Yeah, they're definitely not like they're they're taking it seriously, which is good to see. Yeah, no, he's he's played quite a few games lately. Playing games, asking for advice, playing against uh, Santa and the likes. Yeah. Looking forward to see what happens there. Of course, besides that, since the last... No, since the last one we won tournament, the only change has been the calls, I think. I don't know. The economy is a bit older than that. And we are heading into the game. Magico playing Orzu, as we were talking about him playing, preferring Aru. He plays anything, and he's <laughs> quite good with everything. He, he plays as, as Orzu, as Voyrug heads back to a jar. Who he seemed more confident with, with as he chose her first. At least on this map, I, I'm kind of wondering if there's a thing because I oh wait, no, I know there's a thing because Frontiers has actually had gotten some complaints that it's really good for thrones. <laughs> it it's difficult to, f it's there's a lot of places thrones can hide out that is hard for anti air units from the ground to deal with them. So thrones have become very common as a choice. Hence, a lot of Karath play on Frontiers relative to Canyon, or Lost Province. If we're not going to be seeing Lost Province today. That's considered purely 2v2 now. But back when we were seeing Lost Province more often, yeah, same thing. Same difference. See, I find that pretty interesting. Right? I, I kind of enjoy the fact that some maps will just favor some Immortals or stuff. I mean, I, I do think every single Immortal, and or at least every faction, should be viable on every map. But it's kind of interesting to have some stuff when you're going to have five five factions and 15 immortals to have some stuff you know this immortal just kind of doesn't work on this map and that's okay the immortal will be great on some other maps and if you don't want to play that yeah. well maybe play on some other maps like diversity and i expect yeah i expect there's going to be some tweaks though like in this case it's oh, yeah. probably going to be tweaked and in general oh, like i would like for various reasons for those of you coming into the game i would recommend that once we get into beta you find three immortals that you like like both because sometimes maps make it a little harder, and also because there's, at the very least, like there's some discussion about how things are going to be sorted out. It's possible that we're not that mirror matches aren't going to be a thing on rank for like mirror match immortals, not factions. You can still play like Aru versus Aru, but not necessarily Mala versus Mala. That might be a thing. There's talking about that. There's talking about possible like systems for like pre-game drafting, like immortal draft pick kind of thing. How that's going to work is totally up in the air, but just for the sake of being prepared for it, 
I recommend finding three Immortals that you like, so you always have something you want to play. Or at the very least, if you're intending to be competitive. If you're not, well, just have fun with the game, play yeah. everything, and just enjoy the game, because it's a fun ride. Especially but I mean, if you're doing that, you're probably going to be playing a bunch of Immortals anyway, because you're just going to mess around with all the different systems. Exactly. You just want to figure out what's fun and just yeah. like, oh, I'm just going to harass you to death. Okay, fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking I'm talking to the competitive players who really, really, really want to like, drill down and learn an Immortal. It's like, that's great. Just be prepared to do it for three Immortals, and you should be fine. Yep. Well, also, you got to be careful because beta means everything's going to change. How we'll only have three factions beta before five at release, or at least that's the plan. Yes, but, but there's going to be eight Immortals. That's the plan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's what I mean by Im three immortals. Not necessarily play all three factions, just three immortals. Yeah, at the very least. This should be fun. Learn them. Yeah, learn them all a little bit. But at the end of the day, the game is made in a way that every immortal should be able to have the tools to deal with every every situation, kind of. Some will deal with some situations a bit easier, but everyone should be able to deal with every situation. Uh, just with every every faction, having every role, you have the anti air role, you have a uh, generalist role, so everyone can shoot up, can dislodge other units can deal dish out the damage to take out some reinforced position as long as you have all those yeah. all those uh bases covered which all the immortals will pass for the design of the game yeah it'll be an interesting ride to see what happens with those five factions or even just eight immortals which will be a lot it will but i think it'll be fine i think it'll work out i i i trust it'll work just fine oh yeah you've played enough fighting games to know that i've played enough fighting games to know that yeah <laughs> Having more options is more fun. More creativity coming out. Oh, this this build will work against this immortal, so I'm just going to hope this person does that. Yes, he did. Perfect. <laughs> Being around the, the Speaking person. of, though, Magical... They're going for fast... Well, they're going for fast tech anyway, fast air. Well, <laughs> not if you're much more keen on making the map control work in their favor. Not if you're... Are they going to go for it? They're going to go for it! Yeah, no, they can't quite for it yet. No, that's just Ooh, a Saushin. the perfect round. Perfect round oh, for Magical. Oh no, that Saushin went way too far out! Oh, the second Sparty the second Spar survives the very least. Uh, but getting the expensive Saushin out of that is great for Voyer. And his army has reinforced the, the Zephyrs at the back along with the Absorber. Means can really push his opponent back. However, as soon as he gets into Hallowed Ground, those Zentari get the range attack as well. And that's when you have to be careful. Uh, they're focus firing down the strong units. That's none of our. I'm gonna struggle with magical having four, having made very forward bases. It have, being surrounded by all that hallowed ground that magical can take yeah. full advantage of is so great for him. Magical really dis dissecting these maps, figuring out the perfect place to play stuff to get map control. I have total vision around him. You see, like, magical around, like, there's no real, no really point of attack against magical right now. He can play defensive, he can go on the offense as he is with all his Zentari, and the Scepter coming in for more harass, that's what he decides to go for. None of you are in response, to continuing to go heavy on the ground tag, looking to set up some Arc Mothers, as we saw in their game against Skix. Totally not of yours, Arc Mothers are a powerful asset for them. Yeah, the Arc Mothers worked great against uh, against his opponent. Really, like we didn't talk about Arc Mothers enough and how much their damage reduction really won him a few uh, of those. Yeah, fights. that was that was significant for some of the mid game fights, and especially when he went to, when when Nadavoyer went for the assault in the third. The Arc Mothers carried that fight. Oh yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Like we said, basically, Total Nadavoyer will be able to make sure the units take half damage. With the Arc Mothers, when the Arc Mothers throw that little sigil circle on the ground. Yeah, that's not a way of making their army basically twice as tough. Yeah, and it's all about ret army retention. That's that's really Ajari's game. Army retention, either through that or salvation, keeping them alive. Heaven's Aegis, which just gives extra shields. A lot of the kit about keeping your units alive and keep pushing forward. As he does, Magical taking more control of the map, getting those pirate camps. As we're getting ready to push again for... Oof. It's always going to be difficult against a magical who's well set up. Man, Voyer has the resources. Like, they had the pyre to supplement this fight if they think it's worth taking. Yeah. It's it's really a matter of timing, figuring out when is the best, best time for that position and moving into magical position. What they want is right now, like, magical is moving. Magical is on the move, out of hallowed ground. This is exactly when Hattolan out of your 
wants to get in. They are able to intercept, but just a little bit too late. Magical gets back into the safety of that Magi, of that Hallowed Ground. Especially if you can get that uh, Archimutter, Archimutter Retention Circle, as you call it, uh, to get in there and really help with that fight. The Hallowers are coming in, and Hallowers will, can just force a fight at this point if they, if they just shoot from afar. Uh, Voyer won't really have a choice but to engage on top of them or to keep taking damage, which he doesn't want to take. Now, oh, magical force in the issue with the Hallowers. There's not a Voyeur. Problem in the Arkham of the def defense field. And getting some value out of it. If the Magi go down, there's no Hallowed Ground. Oh, my bad. The tower is up. There is Hallowed <laughs> Ground, and it's not going down anytime soon. Magical bought enough time for themselves. Not a Voyeur can't assault the position easily. Yeah, and behind us, Magical, is that taking his fourth base already? That was happening? No, they're taking their fifth base already. Oh, okay, fourth and fifth base at the same <laughs> they time. They already have their fourth. Yeah. Oh, we're still on two bases. Ooh, that's going to be an uphill battle for sure. As Magical really showing the power of economy, his army will just be outmatching his opponent. Vorder has a timing right now. He needs to hit it. As Magical invested a lot in those bases, a lot of money into getting those bases up, Vorder needs to do something now if he doesn't want to pull so far behind on his opponent. Unfortunately, having been on a third base, Magical has an army advantage. Not if Voyeur is struggling as it is to maintain their own presence. Magical, like, Voyeur does have the option to, to kind of go around and see what they can hit, but again, there's towers everywhere. There's hallowed ground everywhere. This Zentari could be anywhere. Magical has no real gaps in their armor that yeah, Magical Voyeur can take advantage of. And the one that might come up, Not a Voyeur is threatening. Voyeur's doing his best. Uh, well, the Ancient will come out, and that's outside of the grasp of his opponent, so that's something, I suppose. Well, those Hallowers are making sure that non Voyeur cannot wait around for Magical to come to them. And indeed, they can't. Oh, but the Hallowers, every single time, the Hallowers can shoot and do some damage while Voyeur gets nothing out of it. Ugh. Dark Matter's ability is powerful, but... Magical just doesn't care. He stands in it nope. and waits for it to run out. No, uh, again, Magical has the advantage of momentum. They can force Nadavagir to fight and then just back off into the hallowed ground where Magical has the advantage. Yeah, Voyeur has some Sharu coming up. They are setting up to at least deal with this. They just don't have a lot of ether to work with. Like, they do not have the resources to build mass Sharu or any. They're going into the fight, though. Magical, this is exactly what they want. Magical can just rout Nadavoyer's army. It's over. And Nadavoyer, they cannot pick this position at all. Not a complete rout. Small retreat. Yeah, we can look, Magical, at, the army, well, we can look at the army value in the bottom right. 34 against 25. It's not the whole story, though. It has 128 supply for Magical. As he can reproduce his army much better than his opponent. As uh, he has five bases worth of mining at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's been such a big deal. And the third base is getting wrecked. Magical already just making sure Nadavoyer cannot make use of it. But also making sure that ne Voyeur can't go around the sides. Again, the Sapari is... Sorry, the... Shara can't be built up. The Sapari could be upgraded with the Eye of Aros. That's the one thing that can't work for them is speed, speed and shields. Speed Shield Zapari could be able to just outmaneuver Magical's army. It's exactly what Voyeur is going for. Getting some damage, but again, Magical's... They've beaten them on tech. Thrones are up, nothing to deal with it. The Ark Mothers are helping quite a lot, but it's only going to last so long before the Thrones... The Thrones dominate. And Magical, once again, maintaining that fight, maintaining the army advantage. Total Nine of Voyeur doesn't really have a win condition in the center of the map. They cannot push this. They're just throwing more and more of the units away. But if you don't push, the Hallowers will keep dishing damage from the back, and that's the other issue right now. Magical just has a perfect army ta <laughs> taking complete control of his half of the map while denying his opponent from taking expansion on his side after still denying the expansion as Four is still uh, trying to push forward, yeah. but there's little he can do. And not if I understands that Magical takes the game. That's, oh. that's the GG. Magical yeah, was game one off of just slow ores and grind. But that's, uh, that's the Orzum way. That's how you're supposed to play Orzum. That's how he's designed. Take your opponent slowly but surely, taking ground and stopping them from really taking you down.
and Magico plays it to perfection. In this first game, this best of three, where we'll have a chance for revenge. He can pick the next map, and we'll see what how it goes from here. I mean, the only other option is Canyon, so I expect we're going to see Canyon. I mean, unless they want to take a run back, they might go for the run back. Yeah, if you change your immortal, no, they're going for the run back. Yeah, although they're yeah they're requesting a switch, which sure, I mean, we can do that. No, changing a lot of units can make a pretty big difference. I'm not sure why they're going for the top side, though. I mean... Although, to be fair, I do like the idea broadly of oh, swapping... Get... Yeah, get your opponent out of there. He doesn't know what's up. Magic. No, I mean, more like in general as... I, it's, it is symmetric, but I think I think the idea in general of having, like, just swapping between sides if you're doing it or doing the same map again is oh. a good idea. Although it might be a little bit difficult to follow. I mean, yeah, people are watching. Thing, yeah. yeah, people are watching. Do let us know. Like, it might be just too hard to follow. But I think, from a competitive integrity perspective, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, if you could change the colors at the same time, it wouldn't be as bad. But true, since the colors yeah. are Based on the on the side. Yeah, for now, for now they are at least. Here we go. Magical bottom right. This time, as still staying as Orzu. Both of them just having the same the same factions again. <laughs> Figuring out how they can uh, really take their advantage forward. Hopefully, Vora can figure out how to not uh, how not let his opponent take all those bases, and hopefully, can test a bit more if he wants to take this one back. Judging by the altar start, I would say Non of Warriors decided the only way to fight Orism is to not let Orism set up. That's that's the message I'm getting here. Mm. Not of Warrior doesn't want to doesn't want to play the macro game. They know it's not going to work for them. All right, it's bold strategy. See if it works out. Yeah, well, I, I like seeing the change, right? I love seeing change of pace like that. Especially Magical. There's not, there's not really a tower to defend that natural directly. It's a bit forward, so there's a way to go around it and try to do some damage. I'd love a proxy, but not quite yet. I we haven't seen Santa yet. They did beat Wajizo, so they will be in the winners finals. Yeah. But currently, no, they have not, in fact, been on stream. <laughs> so, yeah, cheese, cheese, definitely up in the air. Could, yeah. could be, could be in future, maybe. Santa's been playing very vanilla though. They've been playing extremely macro oriented. I would be surprised if they went for cheese, but mm, they have done it. Well, especially against someone like Magico. Like someone like Magico, you want to surprise them. You want to figure out ways to get around them. They won the two v two tournament together. They know each other well. They're practice partners. Sometimes you just got to throw something out there and hope he doesn't figure it out. And Santa's the one that loves throwing those wrenches in there. As for Voyeur, they appear to be anticipating the Absolver as the threat going quickly up to well, getting that Reliquary so they can get either get Saushin or Zephyrs. It could be just Mass Saushin. In either case, no, Zephyrs. Absolutely Zephyrs. Voyeur does not want to allow Absolvers to just run roughshod. Get the early Zephyrs. Voyeur will be able to do a lot more maneuvering. Take out the Absolvers. Take out... And also have the damage to take out the Absolvers with. Because of the way the armor types and damage types interact. Yeah. Well, it'll all come down to micro at this point. Depending on what type of units his opponent goes for. Zephyr outrange that this entire even when and how ground. So they'll be able to do a lot of damage there. Do they do that one Zephyr Zentari upgraded? So that Zentari upgrade, they were even. Ah, uh, yeah, there might be even one upgraded, but then the Zephyr can also get upgraded to beat them. Right, that's true. That's true. So there might be a timing if magical upgrades are Zentari, but Voyeur should be okay for kiting. Exactly. Uh, Zentari roaming the map as much as possible, get, getting those power caps. Sometimes stopping his opponent from getting his own power, but Voyeur was not too uh, worry about about getting that power out oh, he comes to camp there's nothing there i'll be a bit sad for him well they can at least track magical's forces yeah, exactly going around the map figuring out as much as he can and none of your they've committed this idea they want the early zephyrs they've revealed it as well like magical knows okay well we got zephyrs we gotta deal with those. 
he doesn't yeah. seem too worried, right? Heading no, they don't. No, there. this is this is an opportunity for Boyer to have micro potential, but it's not necessarily death. There we go. Tower magical, just really taking control of the map, getting as much power as he can, and putting towers down everywhere. As you said, okay, they know where to put them to maximize defensive potential. Yeah, that's super important for Orzum. Because also, don't forget, every one of those towers, if if Boyer goes to attack it, Magical just spends some pyre, and those towers become splash damage towers. Ah. All of a sudden, a big army becomes a very small army very fast. Yeah, exactly. It, it can do a while. Well, none of our keep playing their cards close to their chest. So oh, they're going for it. Definitely want that air superiority, which again makes sense for anticipating absolvers. Magical, on the other hand, is really wow. This is the most imagery focused game, game I have seen from Magical ever. Mm -hmm. They do not go for this much Zentari Magi. This is new. I mean, they certainly are practicing, like, hey, let's get that Hallow Ground going at the Zentari range up, but I have not seen. This thing, focus on infantry ever from them. He could just jump on his opponent, right? At some point, if oh, yeah. there's no micro back, all the Zentari just kill you because Zentari are just more powerful than the than the Zephyrs in straight up fights. Zephyrs really get their power from the micro potential. And also from not requiring hallowed ground. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but there is the hallowed ground here, and yeah, there you go. Orzum Reclamation takes the tower down as soon as head twenty five under twenty five, <laughs> and there's a micro wind step keeping his units alive. Uh, but Magical doesn't seem to care, just pushing forward with the Zentari. Forrest using all his uh, potential to keep pushing forward. Needs to focus fire down, gets one of the Zentari, and Magical heads for the alloy line. Uh, Magi, Magi, I, Magi priority takes out one. Foyer blocks out the other. Wants to make sure there is no chance of hallowed ground here, which is wise. Very, very wise. Sadly, Voyeur, their forces are on the wrong side of their base. They can't easily get reinforcements. Windstep is wasted. Magical taking out the Zephyrs one at a time does lose a lot in the process and is forced to rebuild because that was that was Magical's army. But look at the natural. It's gone now. Look how low that natural is on Voyer's side. It's getting lower and there's only four oh. left. And will he get it? Magical. They will the get it. Off. They get the last shot. Voyer calls it. Magical moves on to the winner's finals. Ooh. Well, so that is I the... guess that was cheese. I mean, I don't know if I call Mass and Terry cheese like that, but. Mm. No, it's just a very strong uh, strategy. Yeah, it's a very strong push. It.